Here's the call to worship. Though there are rulers, presidents, kings, queens, God is the Lord of all life. In God we live and move and have our being. God requires our faithfulness and our service. We reach out to others with the same kind of love with which God has touched our lives. Come, let us worship the Lord who is always with us. Let us praise God who walks daily by our side. Though there are rulers, presidents, kings, queens, God is the Lord of all life. So my friends who are on Zoom, I, um, I just wanted to tell you that there's been a new update with Zoom. And so you might be trying to get on um, with your camera and that may not be working for you this morning. So please don't be frustrated. I also wanna tell you that I cannot currently um, mute you. So if you are talking it like it's, and you are not muting yourself, we can currently hear you. Um, so you might want to figure out how to mute yourself or not talk <laughs> um, so that you're not embarrassed. Okay, just want you to know that. <laughs> okay, let's pray. <sighs> oh, Lord God. Um, for mishaps and mistakes and challenges <sighs> at the beginning of worship, um, we just ask that you would give us grace with one another. <sighs> that you would send your spirit to be with us wherever we might be, that we could experience the beauty of worship, the, the beauty of your presence. And we thank you for all the ways that you can be with us this day. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading this morning is Acts 17, 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the esophagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands. Or is he, oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or is he served um, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all the nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own po poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art an imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Please join in the hymn page 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
So, um, rough start. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's probably a really good day to have such a rough start because um, this is a great scripture for us to be looking at in regards to that. Um, so Paul preaches what um, some theologians talk about as the best sermon of his life. Um, he's at the Areopagus, and so here he is, he's speaking to the Athenians, and they have um, what he's recognizing, and this is true to their, um, their life um, and their culture, is they have these gods to everything all the things right there's a there's a there's a god of the harvest and a god of the fertility and a god of the sun and and then he finds this god of the unknown it's sort of like just in case we missed something we're going to erect this god and 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 it'll be there and paul says to them okay okay i understand who you are i understand your culture and I want to tell you that this is not where God lives. God does not live in any of these idols or in this unknown God as much as God does not live in this building, right? right. Such a great day for us to remember that. God does not live in the way we worship, right? God does not live in this house. And so... Um, it had me, I, I thought a lot about it this week and, and began to wonder how is it that we um, kind of inter can take this scripture in for our life today. So here's what I think. Um, I was thinking about a conversation that I had with a colleague recently and she was working on her doctorate and one of her professors had said to her, um, had said to them, um, I'm wondering if they can hear me. Here? Yeah. Um, one of her, that one of the one of her professors had said to them, um, the. No, um, one of, are you? Can you all hear me? This is a nightmare. Oh golly. Okay. Okay, so you have to turn that off. I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to turn the volume back up. Not coming through on Zoom. Okay. I have the... Okay, so you have to turn that off. I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to... Can you hear me now? Okay, Terry, turn off the Facebook sound. I Please. did. Okay. Can, okay. You, can you hear me now? No? You can't hear me? How's that? There she is. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. This is a nightmare. Okay. Okay. There we go. So sorry. All right. We're fine, right? What did Olaf say? It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> okay. Where was I? Um, oh, okay. My friend. Let me tell you, let me get back to the story. So, my friend's professor had said to her um, that. She was, uh, so he said to them, oftentimes pastors go into churches and they say, I'm going to go and create a program and bring Jesus here and for, on behalf of the church. And, and what he said to them was, um, how about you go to them and you say, let's go find where Jesus is already active. And you get busy there. And it's such a different way of us to look at it. And I realized that, you know, this is the fifth church that I have served. And I realized that I have made that mistake in some of, um, some of the churches that I have served. And also that, that we do that sometimes. That we, we decide to create a program and think that we're going to bring Jesus in and we forget that Jesus is already here and that we can go to where Jesus is and get busy in that moment and in that place. And here's the thing is that I think that sometimes the, the stuff that we create becomes our idol. 
And it becomes hard then for us to say, maybe I won't let that go. Um, so, and then we erect a statue to it and we touch it <laughs> and we say, this is the thing we love most rather than saying we actually love Jesus most, right? I think what Paul is trying to say to us in this letter or in this, in this sermon is, and, and we hear it in the, in the end, is um, that there is, that, that God is in us. It is in God, God who is, it is, it is in God that we live and move and have our being, right? And so rather than seeking God somewhere else, we recognize that God is already here, right? And, and so I think um, certainly in this time of being so much at home, maybe you have spent some time recognizing that God is right here. It, it reminded me of a time many years ago when I was um, with my oldest son, he was then three, and I was having this conversation with him about baptism. And I was explaining to him that with his baptism, that God would never leave him, that that blessing was never going to go away. And so many of you know that I talk about the blessing of baptism as being sticky water, right? The sticky water blessing that will never leave him. And so we were talking about the sticky water blessing. And a couple hours later, he was in the tub and um, I, he was pouring water over his boat and his boat captain three times. And I looked at him and I said, hey, buddy, what are you doing? And he said, I am baptizing my boat and my boat captain because I want the blessing of God never to leave them. And um, I said, oh, okay. And about an hour later, when it was time to get ready for bed, and I went out into the kitchen, and there was this mound of dishes. I mean, like overwhelming mound of dishes. We lived in an apartment that had no dishwasher. It had probably been literally, I mean, I'm, I'm not proud to say, a day and a half worth of dishes. Um, I was a seminary student. I had so many things to do. I had two papers due the next day. I remember that. I had 100 pages of reading to do and a little boy to put to bed, and I was completely exhausted. And I looked at the dishes, and I probably had some choice words to say about the dishes that were there. And he said, Mommy, are you going to baptize the dishes? Yeah. You see, there was something to be said about recognizing that with that regular work that we do, God is here. God is in us and with us and living through us. So, you know, so here's what I want to say. Even in like the craziness of the way this worship started this morning and maybe even was halfway through for our Zoom people, God is here. God is living in us and with us and through us at all times. Amen. All times. Whether we are in this building or in our living rooms, or in our bedroom, still in our pajamas. I got a great email from one of our worshipers who said, I love pajama worship. <laughs> it just made me chuckle, but made me so happy that she is finding a blessing in the hard times of this. Yeah. So my friends, God is with us. In us as we live and move and have our being. We don't have to search for God or build things up because Jesus is here and we can find him in the everyday. Amen. <clears throat>
Though the night is dark, it won't be very long. Thanks be to God, the morning light appears. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Billows rolling high. And thunder shakes the ground. Lightning flashed. And tempests all around. Jesus walks the sea and calms the angry waves. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Tracy. So let's spend some time in prayer. Lord God, um, We pray this day for those who are seeking you in places that they simply won't find you. Those who are seeking you in alcohol, drugs, relationships, or shopping, or all of the places that will never fill them the way you can. God, fill their homes. Fill their very spirits, their very being with your essence. That they may continually turn towards you and know you more than they have ever known anything else. God, I pray that we would have grace with one another today. <sighs> oh. For all the things that went wrong this morning, help us to count the things that went right. <sighs> help us to know that our worship is about you about how much we love you and how much we desire to be with you. And so we pray, God, that we will continue to turn towards you to bring, your, uh, to bring our praise to you. God, we pray for those who are living on the margins, even those amongst us, those that we know about and those we don't know about, those who today will be hungry, those who about how much we love you and how much we desire to be with you and those who um, have no way of finding shelter we pray for those agencies that are providing support. And God, if it is in us, we pray for the generosity 
to support those agencies. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this would be the time in the worship service that um, we would encourage folks to give an offering unto the Lord. And so if you um, are so inclined, whether you are worshiping on Zoom or on YouTube, or Facebook, and any other way that you might be worshiping, um, I encourage you to give an offering to your local church, wherever that is. Um, if you are to do that here for Trinity Church, um, the easiest way to do that is to go to trinitychurch.com and uh, go to our webpage and to do that and um, to give that way. Or to write a check, you can do that as well. Um, however, I know that some of you worship in other churches um, as well, and um, most important is that you just contribute to any church, um, because all churches need us right now. Um, so I appreciate your efforts there. God bless you. Um, so let me just go ahead and offer a benediction for those of you who are watching on YouTube and um, Facebook. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen.